Welcome back to King Wall's Card, episode 38 and bound. Woo! How are we all doing? And uh, I'm delighted to be back on the court. And I have a really cool, cool uh, dude in with me today. And I'm very appreciative that he's come on to King Wall's Court. It's Dave Clear from Baylor. How are you, man? Uh, geez, man. Yeah, you're, you're bigging me up already here. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. Uh, cheers, man. We're delighted to be here. It's been, it's been a long time since I've even chatted to yourself, you know, so it's, it's nice to be here, man. When was the last time we, we met? It's, we oh, oh, probably bumped into you at some gig in Dublin somewhere. I'd say, yeah, you know, it's geez. been a long, long time. Yeah, I, was, yeah, you, I have to say, um, I mean, yeah, before we go on, I mean, you're just off uh, the Bloodstock performance, aren't you? Yeah, 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 just like yeah. a week and a half ago or thereabouts. Yeah, let's go straight for the juggler there. How did that go? Tell yeah. me about it. Yeah. Good crack, man. Yeah, it was. Uh, so we were on the, the Sophie Lancaster stage on the Saturday nice. and um yeah, man, it it just went really well. We we couldn't it couldn't have gone better for us to be honest. Um, geez, I, I don't even know where to begin. It's just it was exciting. We we'd never played a big festival like that before, you know. And obviously, mm. geez, we haven't we haven't even played a show since I think it was November two thousand nineteen. You wow. know, because yeah. like we 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 did a tour with a band called Black Coast um, oh, from yeah. the UK, and we finished that tour and went straight over to record our album. Decided, you know, this is December two thousand nineteen, and then we decided right. You know, we've been working our socks off. Let's take a break for like a couple of months. So we did, and then lo and behold, March 2020, the world shuts down. <laughs> you know, so that our last gig was nearly two years ago. So for our first gig back to be at such a festival like Bloodstock, man, you know, we we were nervous, but we were so excited. Like, and I can, um, I can only imagine how he's felt that. You know? Yeah, man. Yeah, it was it was just super hype before we went on. I was just all the all different thoughts racing through my mind before we went on. You know, but yeah. um. Great time though, man. Really, really enjoyed it. And it's a great festival as well. It's really cool festival. It? Brilliant. Yeah, I'd, I'd, I'd never been before. Just, yeah. you know, going to it. But Performing <clears> on <throat> it is even, I mean, now, I mean, I have performed on the like, smallest stage there, but it was still, by the time we were into our set, it, the place was hopping, like, you know? Yeah, so man. you, you yeah. were playing in a fucking awesome place. <laughs> you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah, man. Um, good, a decent time too. Like we were on at, a, I think it was 2.20 in the day. So, you know, we, nice. we weren't we weren't grabbing the people getting up in the morning or anything, which was kind of nice as well. Um, so yeah, we had a nice crowd there. People people really dug in. You know, hopefully we can go back someday. And, you know, it's, it's hard to predict what's going to happen from here in terms of gigs. Obviously, it's very hard to book shows at the moment because, well, obviously in Ireland, it's a no-go. But, you know, the UK seem to be doing shows again. So we're trying to, you know, work something out to, for, to get a tour or something going over there and yeah. do as much as we can. It's unfortunate, it really is, because there's so many bands that are just fucking sitting around at the minute and they can't do anything really except maybe record or whatever. And, yeah. like, but, like a lot, you know yourself, a lot of the Irish bands kill it when they play live absolutely um, yeah 100 that's i mean that, that's what we have a reputation for is our lives live shows and yeah it's it's killing us it's killing our bands and mm-hmm. it really it really but is. i think i think we have to work that bit harder you know what i mean because like mm. when you go over to the uk i think the thing we've noticed and, and like beyond the uk as well is that there's such a bigger audience for metal and even other genres as well, but particularly metal. And, you know, it comes down to population as well. You know I mean? We're a small yeah. country in the grand scheme of things, you know? So, I mean, and like, the you know, there's not a hell of a lot of venues in Ireland that put on metal, whereas in the UK and beyond, there's there's a lot more, Tons. you know what I mean? Yeah. And I think, and, I, and this is no disrespect to any UK bands, but I think sometimes maybe that's taken for granted a little bit that they have those opportunities, yeah. you know? Um, so I think with Irish bands getting the chance to go abroad, you know, we make the most of it. We work hard for it and we put on a good show because we have to. You know what I mean? We need yeah. to look, we need to rise above and be be better in any way that we can, you know? It's almost like fighting for everything that we, we have, isn't it? Yeah, you know, yeah, really 100%. I mean, that's that's our history as Irish people anyway, isn't yeah. it? Like, so, like, yeah. 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 I mean, Jesus, like, uh, yeah, we played a handful of shows after Bloodstock, from Bloodstock, which was great. And... Yeah. The people that the people were so happy just to see Irish bands coming over, playing in a little club or whatever. Like you know, they were like it's really the same when yeah. you just play over there. Um, it's just I love the the vibe over there when you play. It's fantastic. Like, yeah, absolutely. People are so welcoming over there as well. You know what I mean? That's that's the cool thing about it. Like, and you know, we often met, you know, a, a bad person over there. Everyone is so nice. You know, the promoters yeah. we've met, the other bands we've met. Everyone is just so cool and welcoming, you know, and, and 
I'd advise any band that can go over to the UK or anywhere else for that matter, you know, do it. Just take yeah. the jump. I know it's I know it can be expensive, I know it can be a big leap, but man, it's worth it. It's worth it in the end. And the contacts you make and the exposure you get gotta be done, you know. It's brilliant. It really is. And uh did you get to see any bands uh, over the weekend or were you out of it yeah. or what? <laughs> Yeah, 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 yeah. So uh, let me think. We we got there on the Thursday. It was it was an extended by a day this year because mm. obviously it didn't happen last year. So it ran Wednesday to Sunday, but we only left kind of Wednesday night, Thursday morning to head over and get to the ferry over. So we got there Thursday uh, evening, I guess. Um, caught a couple of bands. We were kind of tired after the travel and everything, so we only caught a couple of bands. Um, I'm being honest. I I I don't know who some of them were because we didn't look up who yeah. was on at the time. Like, but um. Then on the Friday, we kind of got in there properly and we were hoping to see loads, but unfortunately, there one of their party had a COVID, tested positive for COVID, like so loads had to pull off the bill. But uh, another cool band that we really like called Higher Power, they're from Leeds, they're a hardcore band, they played, mm-hmm. so we checked those guys out. Super cool band, like really, really catchy. Uh, who else did we see on the Friday? I think Raging Speedhorn played on the Friday. That's mm-hmm. always a party, like, <laughs> you know what I mean? Those guys, those the, they go for it. Like. And Dan Cook's singer for them there, wasn't he? Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like he was in RSJ, very good frontman, actually. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, he's a super energetic dude as well. Like, yeah. Yeah, he's re- re- really good. They killed it. They were on the Sophie stage on the Friday evening. That they absolutely killed it. That was great. Nice. And of course, we saw Devin Townsend was headlining the main stage on the Friday night. Man, that was sick. Love Devin Townsend. Man, he was so good. Like, did you see his? Um, um, did you see his kind of uh, on you know quarantine gigs that he was doing? Himself? Yes. They were yeah, amazing. and all the crazy backgrounds and yeah. stuff he was doing like yeah gas crack man yeah absolutely like he's such a cool character like he, he's yeah. he's a uh, you know his music is so amazing and so intricate but he doesn't take himself seriously and i think that's a big that's the key to it you know yeah. you gotta have he's, fun doing he's positive do. he's positive yeah yeah exactly yeah and he's some actually he around, injured bro. himself um he injured himself a few days before the show oh, he had a back brace on him playing and like obviously you know he, dude i don't know how he did it but he he had a 10-day quarantine to play that show he had to come to the uk from canada Jeez. have a 10 day quarantine in a hotel and then he injured himself somehow i don't know what was he exercising or what and then he had like three days rehearsal with there was a band put together for him basically in the uk a drummer bass player and another guitarist and they had three days rehearsal of all the material and the show was just great it was unreal you know they're all really professional like so now does he do that every time he plays now does he does he or do, like if he no was no his- i think so. He he normally because I mean I, geez I don't know that must have been his first show in 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 ages I, don't, mm. I presume like you know, um but normally he does have a touring band a set a set band like but for yeah. this he couldn't bring people with him obviously with the restrictions and oh, all that yeah. kind of crack like yeah um yeah that sounds awesome did you did you watch Judas Priest run yeah we caught a bit of Priest we didn't stay for all of it because we were leaving that night um at two a.m. to travel towards the ferry. So we kind of said, you know, we can't miss him, but we yeah. probably can't watch all of them. So we caught kind of half the set kind of thing before we headed off, you know. But yeah, that's um, all you need to um, see them, <laughs> Yeah, yeah, and it's mad. Like 50 years they're going, man. I don't know how they're doing that stuff. Like, yeah, like, dude, if it, my body couldn't take them 50 years of this, like, <laughs> yeah. you know. Oh, actually, before we go on, I just want to say yeah. rest in peace to Eric Wagner from uh, Trouble at the School yeah. and yeah, Charlie, that, yeah, Charlie yeah. Watts from the Rolling Stones. So they yeah. did this week. So, you know, rest in peace, the two lads. Absolutely, um, yeah. Sad news, man. Sad yeah. news. What is an amazing though? Look, Charlie Watts was eighty and he was still playing. Man, <laughs> those guys are made from another mold. You know what I mean? Like it's it's a different breed of, of musician from back then, man. They just went for it. Like, Absolutely. I'd love to know the secret. I'd love it. Do you know what it is? They partied hard and they didn't give a fuck and they just kept going. You know? Yeah. It's like yeah, Lemmy. Lemmy just, just kept going. We was, you know, he was told that yeah. we did it, did it worse. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's like you know, I suppose he probably got to the stage where his body needed whatever the fuck yeah. he was putting into himself. Like, yeah, there was probably was more it. Jack Daniels in his blood than blood, if you know what I mean. <laughs> Oh, 100%, man, 100%. I'd say you could probably inject his blood into a hamster or something, probably would have died straight away from po- <laughs> alcohol poison. <like. laughs> so, oh, dear, uh, yes, so let me see. You Was there any other, was there many other hardcore bands on the bill? Do you know? No, not really. Uh, so Higher Power, yeah, they were on the Friday. Um, 
I tell you, it's a funny story though. Some malevolence. Uh, we played with them before. Mm. Really great UK UK hardcore band. People should definitely check them out. Yeah. Sick band. Um, they were actually on the same time as us on the main oh, stage. No. So it's such a pity that we clashed because they were, you know, one of the more relevant bands to to us in terms yeah. of genre. Like, but and we really wanted to see them as well, so, but we couldn't. So what harm? But um, yeah. Other than that, there wasn't too many others really. Um. You know, I suppose normally there would be in terms of, you know, Bloodstock is normally quite an international band yeah. festival, you know, mainly UK and Irish bands this time around. There's very few from beyond that. So I guess there just wasn't a lot of hardcore bands booked for it, maybe. I'm not entirely sure. But mm. um, yeah, I think Higher Power and Malevolence are the only two I can think of, or at least the only two I saw anyway. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> Excuse me. But yeah, look, I know, I know that there normally is a good kind of representation of hardcore uh, at yeah. Bloodstock, which is which is great, you know, because it is part of the... Absolutely, yeah. The, the family, so to speak. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I, I think, yeah, they've kind of broadened their horizons a bit on that. I mean, I think in the first maybe like 10, 15, year, 10, 15 years of Bloodstock, I think it was very just pure metal bands, you know? Yeah. But I think they've slowly but surely, you know, they started getting some... Remo- you, you have to change with the times anyway. You know, if mm-hmm. you want to sell tickets, you got to book bands, not just the classic ones, you got to book bands who are relevant and bring in new fans as well, you know? So yeah. I think they have... They've done that. They've rolled with the times, like so. It's good to see. Yeah. Uh, who would be Baylor's main influences? Actually, now that we're talking, main influences for Baylor. <laughs> There's a few hanging around. Well, it's kind of weird, like because so. I mean, in terms of hardcore bands and stuff, you know, Converge. Every time I die, I think they would be the two closest bands that I could, could not compare us to. But like, mm. you know, if we were to do it for fans of quote, then Converge yeah. and, and Every Time I Die would definitely be in there. Um, but it's funny, like we, we, we try to, when people ask us that question, we more so try and talk about the attitude of artists, you know what I mean? Rather, right. rather than necessarily the music, even though, yeah, of course, we take musical influences. Who doesn't like, you know? Yeah. But we do try and talk about the attitude of artists, artists and how they approach their music, how they approach their, their life, how they approach their work ethic, all that kind of stuff. So we pull from loads of different genres, not just hardcore. We pull from like, we're all big hip hop fans. Um, you know, there's there's a, a few pop songs here and there hanging around and we're kind of like some artists do things a different way and we're like, you know, so we, yeah. you know, we, we take from all over the place. It's not just hardcore mm. for us, you know. Yeah, it is. It's, I suppose it is cool to have a, a wide range of influences. I, you know, I, yeah. I, I have so many different, like I used to warm up for my shows to the Bee Gees, believe it or not. You know, yeah, man, us. I could imagine, like, the range is, is amazing for the Bee Gees vocally. Like, yeah. yeah. So... Uh, and I think I mean, and sometimes I don't know if it happens to you guys. I get, I kind of get pigeonholed into a sludge doom type thing. You know what I mean? Yeah, um, of course. Well, that's because I suppose the Woe was is probably your biggest band. I suppose that you've yeah. been in, like you know. Yeah. So I, I guess that's what people know you for. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Does it be nice though to get a baby out and, and uh, use the pipes a little bit? You know? Ah, of course. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Are you in any other bands actually at the moment, Carl? I am in. Let me see. <laughs> Uh, I'm, yeah, in a, at least. Uh, I'm in the Sacre Blues band, which is kind of a uh, folky French bluegrass type thing. Uh, cool. I do percussion and backing vocals in that. Um, I'm in a Slayer cover band now. Oh, no, real. Which nice. we, haven't, we haven't really started. We, of course, lockdown fucked everything up, yeah. really. So we're trying yeah. to get that back up and running again. And I, I will not re- unleash it until I'm happy with it. So, of course. Yeah, yeah, so. yeah. Um, what else? Oh yeah, and I'm in another thing now. Um, from the Ashore, you know the Ashore All Oil Metal Project. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, one of the bands, one of the projects that I worked with in on that were now a band. So, oh, class man. Yeah, that's such a cool thing. Like, because you know, not only is, is it uniting people to write fresh music, you know, people from different bands, but you know, there you go. There's another band that's formed out of it. Like, you know. Yeah. And that's such an Irish thing as well. Like, I mean, people meet each other and they get along. They have similar likes and dislikes and stuff when it comes to music. And people mm. just hop on board, you know. And it doesn't matter where you're living in the country anymore because, you know, the internet. You can write stuff, yeah. send it to each other, and it's it's great, like, you know. And the roads are better as well. You can, <laughs> you know, you're, <laughs> yeah, you're, you're yeah, so, mo- I could get down to you in two hours now or whatever, like, you know, whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The motorways <laughs> are really a lot better. <laughs> Absolutely. Wait, uh, are you in any of our bands, actually, Dave? No, nah, man, no, nah, I'm not, no, I am. Well, I mean, okay, actually, I am. But we, the reason I, I immediately thought no was because, like, so I play in a band called Orca. I play bass uh, oh, for Orca okay. as well. Yes, but, I, I mean, we've never done a gig or anything. We've released a couple of EPs, but um, 
we've never done a show, uh, but we do plan to. There, there are some plans to try and get some rehearsals and stuff going on. Um, because we do want to do shows. That was one of the main aims for us was to do shows eventually, you know. Right. Um, but like the people involved in it, you know, they're in cover bands or have full time jobs and all that kind of stuff. You know, yourself, it's it's hard to get people. Yeah. You know, and also some of the members aren't in Waterford. Some people are in Dublin, so on and so forth. Like mm. so. But no, I would. I we'd like to get gigging with that. Um. So yeah, I guess I am in another band, but it's not a, a working band, shall we say, at the moment. Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. cool. Um, you're still in Waterford, are you? Actually, I am. Yeah, yeah. Just finished the degree here, and I've just been chilling for the summer. Like, so it's oh. kind of nice to not have much responsibility at the moment. Yeah. Like, you know. Well, so, yeah, well it's, done. It's, well done, man. Yeah. Cheers. Thank you very much, man. Uh, is, there, is there much? I remember the the Waterford scene kind of died, mm. didn't it? Really, for a while. Yeah, <laughs> man. As soon as the recession hit back two thousand seven and eight, just fell off, man. It just slowly. It, it took a couple of years to really be completely gone, but. I think maybe from 2011 onwards, it just, mm. I don't want to say it died completely because I suppose that's disrespectful to, to yeah. you know, bands who still keep it going or whatever. But, and we didn't mean it in that way either. Like. Yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah. I know what you mean. But it, it just became a lesser a lesser being, so to speak. Um, but there are people still running, you know, shows here and stuff. And it's starting to pick up. I think what we're really lacking here is um, a venue that will put on you know, not just metal, but like original bands in general. I mean, it's not yeah. like original bands don't get shows here, but there's not a lot. Most of the venues are kind of pub covers bands, which is fine, you know, all around good, but there needs to be a place for other bands to express their work. You know yeah. what I mean? Um, and there's some, there are some cool spots. There's like, there used to be Central Arts, which was a, an, old, an old theater, which was quite cool. Um, that's gone now, unfortunately, and, you know, pandemic struck, mm, and, you know, as, as it did in many places, but, uh, and there's some galleries around as well that put on some shows, so that's kind of cool. Um, very DIY kind of vibe to them because they're floor shows, which I always enjoy. Floor shows, yeah. it's a bit more intimate and there's a connection there, you know? Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I think we're just lacking that kind of big venue. But hopefully someone might pop up soon and, and, and get something going. You know, there's a couple of people that I'd like to have a chat with and see if we can if we can get the ball rolling on something mm-hmm. because I'm half pondering getting back into the, the promotion game. It's been years now since I booked gigs, but, like, you know, I have time on my hands I, I, now. For, I, I was going to say, didn't we play a few more fest gigs? Yeah, you did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's right. They were yeah, great crack, man. They were fucking yeah, great Yeah, man, crack. really good. It, so that started out like, I remember it was my 19th birthday. Uh, I, ran, I just ran a show because I thought, figure what else do I want to do on my birthday? So play a gig and have my mates there, you know what I mean? Yeah. So I did that. And then someone said to me after, I was like, oh, you should do the same thing next year. You know, it'd be great crack. Like, you should call it Murph Fest. And I was like, well, <laughs> there it is. And it just went on from there for about a yeah. decade, like, you know. Oh, uh, we 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 played. I think we played one or two of them. It was fucking yeah, you great. Did, yeah, you uh, would have played in a uh, Electric Avenue. It was one of them right. definitely. Yeah, 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 yeah. If not both of them, it might have been both of them. I think I booked you twice over yeah. the years for that. I'm fairly cool. sure. Did I have you in the forum? No. Was that the big huge place? Big big stage. Yeah. Was yeah. that the low end? I think we played low end. At that. We played low end. That's what it was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Low end is great crack as well. Actually, it was yeah. a great. It was yeah. great crack. Yeah, man, Napalm Death are at that as well, man. Yeah, Napalm Death and Waterford, my mind was blown. I know. Man. I love when stuff like that happens. It's fucking cool, isn't it? Oh, yeah, yeah Napalm yeah, Death played Waterford. Like. Primordial, I think, around the bill as well. That's yeah. Right. Yeah. Wow. Was a good old, it was a good old gig, but uh, it was just, I think, it, your man kind of messed it up a bit, didn't he, the promoter? Was yeah, there was, there was a, yeah, there was, uh, there was one of those famous Metal Ireland uh, threads. <laughs> oh, <laughs> but, uh, yeah, Ash, you look, I mean, you know, I, <laughs> The gig happened and people had a great time. That's the way I look at it. Yeah, you know? exactly, exactly. Yeah. So, how did you um, find your way into Baylor? Jesus. So I was living in Cork at the time. Um, I moved to Cork in 2000, no, 2012, I think it was. So I, I was in, I was in a, a post rap band, an instrumental band called the Great Ocean Divide. At the time, yeah. we formed in Waterford, and about a year after we formed. We decided, feck it, you know, you know, a lot of our friends were moving to Cork. A lot of our friends were already already down there, living there. So we were kind of like, we could just make the move, you know, and yeah. set up camp down there. And so, like we did, we moved down around the summer of 2012, I think it was. Um, and I ended up moving in with our, our drummer and his missus, and our other mate moved elsewhere or whatever in, in the band. Mm-hmm. And we ended up sharing a room actually with uh, Amigra. I don't know if you know Amigra. They're a metal band. Polish metal band from Cork, mainly Polish lads. I mean, kind of modern uh, Amigra. Oh, Amigra, yeah, yeah, Amigra, yeah. Yeah, so. yeah, yeah. So we ended up sharing a room with them, and as, as it turns out, 
uh, they their bass player had left right as we were moving in, and they were looking for one, and I was like, I'll do it. <laughs> so uh-huh. I ended up playing bass in Amiga as well. So nice. um, so I suppose a couple of years later, I obviously got to know a lot of people then in Cork, living there, the music scene and all that crack. And I met uh, Chris, our guitarist. Um, we met at a, a Great Ocean Divide show. And we just became became good friends, hit it off and started hanging out and stuff. <laughs> and but, uh, we actually started jamming was um, our old drummer, Paul, Chris and myself, we decided, feck it, you know, let's let's jam some Limp Bizkit tunes. Because <laughs> we're like, there's there's no one out there doing a Limp Bizkit cover band. We figured, why not? There's a bit of a buzz for new metal at the time. And we're like, yeah, maybe if we got a cover band together, we make a, make a bit of money, you know. So um, that that nothing came of that, really. We had a few jams, you know what I mean? And eventually we started uh, writing some some original material. And Alex, our singer, was in Amigra as well. And uh, he, we got him on board with Baylor, and just went from there. Really, um, mm. that was about late 2014, and we had our first gig then in February 2015. Deadly. And, and then Sean came in a couple of years later on drums. We um, had a drum drum switch there a couple of years in. Like, but, he's a oh man, yeah, Deadly. dude's a beast. He's only gotten better as well, man. He put in so much work for this Bloodstock show we just played. He was sick. He nailed it. Like, awesome. Um. Yeah, Jesus. I mean, I have to say, you guys are, you know, I always say there's unsung heroes of the Irish metal and hardcore rock scene. We just say the same. And yeah. I mean, you guys have always been killing it over across the pond and all that kind of shit. It's always great. I, as I was saying, like, I love hearing if you guys are doing well or fucking yeah. know, anybody. It doesn't matter who it is. Of course. You know? yeah. It's absolutely deadly. And I have to say, uh, there seems to be a really good cork. Scene, doesn't it? Yeah, man. Yeah, that place like Cork has always produced such really good bands, you know. Yeah. Um, you know, worn out our buddies of ours, they're doing quite well at the moment as well. Um, but going back, even like you know, 10 past seven, who are a really cool instrumental band they <laughs> formed down there, they are a great band, still doing gigs here and there. And um, they're, they're all quite busy now and doing different things, like, but they do the odd gig here and there, they're great. Uh, there's a band called Rest, who are an instrumental band again. It's funny, like there, there used to be you now saying down in Cork that rest come but once a year, you know, because they, uh-huh. they, they're all so busy. The, the band is not their priority, but they, you yeah. know, they play a show. Again, they're an instrumental band as well. Along the lines of, um, if you mixed, I guess, Neurosis and Mastodon kind of together, really nice. heavy instrumental stuff, really cool. Like, um, I'm a little bit out of touch. I, uh, oh, no, actually, you know what? Before I say, finish that sentence, God alone, I have to mention God alone, man. Yeah. Those dudes like are Some just boys, super they? talented, like yeah. super talented, you know. And they're all really young as well, which makes me really jealous. <laughs> but <laughs> uh, yeah, no, like we we gigged with them when they were still in school, man. Do you know what I mean? They were all in fifth, sixth year and doing shows with us, like incredible, incredible yeah. band. And I, I, I think out of, out of all bands in Cork, maybe even in Ireland, I think they have such a great chance of making it and going beyond. You know, yeah. Um, I mean, Horse were a really cool band there as well. Um. God, I'm probably going to be leaving people out now and forgetting, but it's not intentional. Yeah, it's, <laughs> yeah, unintentional. Absolutely, yeah, yeah. Like I, I haven't obviously I haven't been down around Cork in like much, not much in like the last year and a half. You know what I mean? Mm. We only got back rehearsing there a couple of months ago, so there might be other new bands after popping up that I don't know about. You know, yeah. over lockdown. So, um, but there are some really great, talented people there. Great musicians, great artists. And it's a great city, man. It's it's a really cool city. Yeah. As I always said it's it's like. It's like a chilled out Dublin, you know. You got everything you need there, and just not as busy with the people. <laughs> I always you know? liked it when I get went down there, and whether yeah, whether it was yeah. to play or you know get away for a few days, or whatever. I mean, I actually mm. con- years ago I considered moving down there. Be- this is before yeah. two thousand one and everything. I was considering moving down there, so I could have been part of that scene. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Yeah, yeah. You would have fit right in, man. <laughs> oh yeah, I, have to, I love I love all the car guys. Yeah, you yeah. know, I just get on with them all. Fucking great! Although you always get the impression there's a little bit of a competition between Cork and Dublin, ah, like, yeah. you know, which is a ah, yeah. friendly, it's, it's, friendly it's, competition, like, you know. Yeah, banter, absolute banter, like you know what I mean. Yeah, hundred yeah. uh, percent. Suitsayer, I should mention Suitsayer yeah. as well. They're doing quite well. Yeah, they're they're doing great really band. well. Great band. Yeah. Yeah. Then, so that, what was I going to say to you? Um, so, who are some of your favorite bands? Actually, whether it's big or small, it doesn't matter. Who are you? Who are you loving at the moment? Like. My, my own personal? Yeah, yeah. Um, well, I, I think Pantera have always been my number my number one band, man. I, I, like, I grew up on that band, and they've just been 
on a pedestal for me ever since. I love that band so much. The riffs are great, the vocals are great, drums, everything about that mm -hmm. band is just great to me. Like, and um, Deftones as well, they're on an equal. And I've had this like internal conflict with myself over the years because obviously Pantera happened, you know, long gone, yeah. finished, you know, last album was like 20 years ago. Um, and obviously Deftones have been releasing newer new material over the years. And, I'm, you know, I've had an inner conflict where I'm like, when do Deftones take over? Like, you yeah. know, as my, as my favorite band, like, because yeah. they're still releasing stuff. And, you know, but I think they'll always be on an even keel, I, I reckon, for me anyway. Here's, here's, um, a, as, con here's a controversial thing for you. Sorry. As a, I like Deftones as well. Well. Yeah. To, up to White Pony, anyway. Yeah. Do you think they lost the teeth after White Pony, or even before White Pony? After, after around so, the four, man. maybe. Yeah, like I mean, if if you look at the self-titled album just after White Pony, man, that's such a vicious album. Like, I mean, opening up there's a tune called Hexagram that opens that album, and it's just so heavy. Like, it's ridiculously heavy. I think I know what you're saying. Like, yeah, they they kind of. They lost a bit of rawness about them, I suppose, as, yeah, as the years went on. And definitely probably. nowadays, you know, they're way more polished, mm. you know, in how they write their tunes and how they approach songwriting, all that kind of stuff. Um, yeah, hard to say. I, I, like, I've stuck with them. I'm just a diehard. I'll always defend, yeah. you know what I mean? But I, I think they've they've had some of their heaviest material after White Pony, I, personally, yeah. I, I would think. Now, don't get me wrong. White Pony is a, is a classic. Oh, oh yeah. fuck me, I love yeah. it. Mm -hmm. And I, you know, and so, like I suppose, musically, yes, they'd be just as heavy. I think it's just, I don't know, just you know, I have to be in the mood for him, you know. I get you. Yeah, I get you. I, I, he's his vocals for me though, like especially his singing as well, the melodic stuff kills mm -hmm. it, man. Absolutely love it. He's just such a unique voice, you know. Mm -hmm. And I think that's why you never saw like a proper Deftones cover band over the years. Is like who does Chino? No one. No, oh, it's, it's so hard to pull him off, like you know, because yeah. like his screams are so high pitched, you know what I mean. And then he hits some really high notes when he's singing as well, yeah. like and it's yeah. such range. a unique voice. Yeah, he was, able, he was able to hang with Maynard Keenan, wasn't he? Oh, big time. Yeah, and uh, and there's another man who was vocals I love as well. I'm a big Tool fan. Love Tool. So um, to but looking at like like other bands I listen to, I mean Converge are huge. I love Converge, man. They, mm. That band are fucking sick as well. Um, every time I die, I know I've already mentioned these as like kind of yeah. Baylor influences and, and such. So I, I do listen to them a lot. But bands I'm really digging at the moment, man, Turnstile. Dude, if if people if you haven't listened to Turnstile and if people who hear this haven't listened to Turnstile, go just go and do it. <laughs> Get yeah. This band are just fucking sick. They're a hardcore band. Uh, I think they're on Roadrunner Records at the moment. They have a new album coming out. Fuck, I think it's this Friday, actually. Oh, cool. Um, and they have a couple of albums before that. Really great hardcore band, man. I saw it. We saw them at a... We did a tour in the UK back in 2019, I think it was, and it turns out Slam Dunk Festival was right at the end of that tour, so we stayed an extra couple of days and, and we went oh. to the festival, you know. So and they played at that, and they were fucking so good, man, so good live. Like the energy for that band, great. I gotta check them out. Do man, well, yeah. I'm gonna, I'm gonna throw um, a name at you. I'm gonna throw a name at you and see if you've yeah. heard of them. Uh, have you ever heard of Today Is the Day? Today Is the Day. I do, I, I do know the name, but I never really listened to them. Right, there's a band for you to check out, and that's what I do that now. I try and get a band that some of my, my guests haven't heard or listened yeah. to yet before. The, the, today, yeah, so would, check would, them out. Would they have been kind of uh, early to mid two thousands metalcore yeah, era? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Been, you know, there's a little bit of uh, neurosis in there as well uh, in the you cool. know in some of their stuff. Just check them out anyway. You know. Yeah, yeah. I think I associate them mentally, like from seeing their name. I think I associate them with that whole Kill Switch Engage era when they took off in the early 2000s yeah. around then. They're English, um, yeah. as far as I know. Yeah, I could be wrong, yeah, but I think cool. they're English. Yeah, I'll definitely check them out, man. Absolutely. Man. Yeah, who else? Um, oh. I, I've been listening to it just because like, I saw them a couple of weeks ago. I've been listening to Higher Power again. Their album is so good, man. <laughs> it's, it's just so catchy. Like, uh, Load, been listening to a lot of those dudes. The album they released, God, was it this year or last year? Time is time has lost all place yeah, in the course. last year and a half, man. I I just don't know. Like, uh, but yeah, loads as well. Love those dudes. Um, what else am I listening to these days? Um, ah, oh, there's an instrumental band. I always forget their name. It's terrible. Hang on, give me a second. I'm gonna find them. <laughs> <laughs> um, but they're I'm not. Well, they're not totally instrumental. They they're I think they're Belgian. They're signed to uh, Sergeant House. You know, Russian Circles are on that yeah, label. Yeah. 
yeah, they're signed to that label. I can never remember your second name is terrible. Like it's one of those things where you know I they're I just probably, on my playlist. I probably you know? should have said it to you beforehand to prepare you, sorry. <laughs> ah, all good, man. All good. I'm like this with bands all the time anyway. It's like I love them, but sometimes I just forget details, you know? Yeah. Um, well, that's all right. I mean, I'm... While I'm finding them, who else am I listening to? Uh, Knock Loose. They're kind of going through my my playlist at the moment. Um, but I listen to other stuff outside metal. Like, I'm a, I'm a big Synthwave fan. You know, there's, oh, yeah. the Synthwave movement came back around... Um, uh, what was the name of that movie? Drive with Ryan, Ryan Gosling, is it? I That's think he was right, in around yeah. 2007 or 8. Yeah. yeah, that soundtrack kicked off that whole movement, you know. And he had, um, yeah, yeah, Night Call by, um, oh, I'm forgetting names again. <laughs> Kavinsky, Kavinsky, that's the one that kind of launched the whole thing. So I listened to a lot like Gunship, who would be a massive, massive one for me. I listened like they're super poppy sounding, but like sometimes yeah. that's sometimes that's what I want. I just sometimes want something really yeah, catchy. Exactly. Nothing wrong with that. You know that, what I mean? Man. Like, I, I don't need someone shouting in my ears all the time. <laughs> you know? But uh, yeah, man, it's it's hip hop, hip hop as well, and I quite like Kendrick Lamar. Okay. Uh, he, I feel he's really he's really set the tone in the last few years for for hip hop. I mean, when you have Jay Z and Beyonce having beats that are very similar to his, you know you're doing something right. Like, <laughs> do yeah. you know what I mean? Yeah. So yeah, um, I lost just do a lot of, of old school hip hop too, like people yeah. under the stairs and De La Soul and stuff as well. Like, you know. I was gonna say I lost um, a lot of uh, I lost a lot of uh, belief in hip hop after the way it kind of I suppose it evolved really, didn't it? But yeah, it's, yeah. But it's whether it's whether you liked what it evolved into is the thing. Like, yeah, yeah, hundred percent, man. Um, I guess yeah. I don't know. That's kind of what I've been spinning at the moment. I go through phases where I don't, you know, I kind of tune out of music, so to speak, no pun intended or anything. Yeah. But like, I just zone out. And sometimes I like just quiet, <laughs> you know? So, like, yeah. Happens. but I do. I mean, I'd be lying if I didn't say I don't listen to some form of music every day, you know? Because yeah. it's just, we love it, don't we? Like, it's just yeah. a part of our lives. And, it's and our it's, life's it's, blood as well when you think about it. Uh, 100%, man. 100%. Brutus, sorry, I found it. Brutus, they're the band. B R U T U S. Brutus, yeah, okay. really cool. Female, female vocalist. The drummer is female. She's vocalist and she's sick voice, man. Great voice. Um, and they do a lot of kind of instrument, instrumental, atmospheric stuff. Like really cool mm. band. Really cool. You, you, you like the old instrumental stuff, don't you? <clears throat> yeah, man. Yeah, I kind of I, I got into that through um, I suppose through Russian circles, really. You know that that really. Yeah. I I'm, I'm I'm a sucker for uh, really like ambient sounds you know and creating like atmosphere and just getting lost in a world in your own head when you hear certain sections in a tune you know yeah so like russian circles really drew me in with that kind of thing and then i could just got into other bands from there really um and when then so i watched from afar hit it big over here yeah. you know but i say over here they're you know they're an irish band like northern exactly, irish yeah um and i remember seeing them in electric avenue in the the main room downstairs in electric avenue back in 2010 i would say maybe early 2011 and they just blew my mind, man. I was just yeah. like, holy shit, this band. Like, not only are they catchy and stuff, but they're heavy, man. Heavier yeah. than you would think from listening to them on CD, you know? It's, yeah. There so, you go. And that's it's, actually it's what, the whole live thing again, you know? Yeah, man. It, it hooks you in, you know what I mean? And I, I, had, I had only heard a couple of their tracks before, you know, I was like, feck it, I'll go see them. Everyone I know is going to see them, so I'll go for a yeah. night out, you know? And then all of a sudden, I was just obsessed. I absolutely <laughs> loved them, like, you know? Um, awesome. And that's really what spawned me uh, to, to form the Great Ocean Divide as well. I was just tapped a couple of buddies up who I knew were into that kind of stuff as well and yeah. we just started writing that kind of music you know so really? yeah um so I believe that you so as we said you have a, you have a single coming out on Friday Fr Friday you know, yeah yeah which is, so when this comes out it'll probably be this will be probably be out Thursday so it'll be the, the next day the 27th um, yeah yeah so yeah. that is Cruel Master yeah <clears throat> yeah that's the one that's it man and then the the album is disposable youth is that the one you've been sitting on for a while yeah man since since uh december 2019 yeah wow. yeah we 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 just didn't want to release it and and for you know and it's no disrespect to any bands that put music out during the lockdown because like you know everyone's in, you know doing their own thing but yeah. for us we were like okay what do we want to do when we drop the album play shows now yeah. okay there's still a chance that we can't play too many shows but it's starting to be an option and we just but also we're at a point where we're like we want to move on we want to write new stuff we want to do a new album we're, yeah. we're in that mindset now so and to be honest we have been for nearly a year 
Um, but we just didn't want to start it without getting this out first, you know. Yeah. Um, and obviously we couldn't really meet up with the pandemic and stuff as well. Like so, you know, things worked against us. But eventually, like you know, um, our manager was kind of saying, "Look, let's find the right the right time." Um, and we just waited and waited, and we decided, you know what, Bloodstock, Bloodstock is the time. Let's get get the first single out and plan everything. Yeah. After that, like you know, so. Yeah, November twelfth, I believe, is the date. Um, but just, we're just excited to get it out, man. We're excited for people to hear it. You know, it's yeah. you know, we feel we have something really good there, and we hope we just hope people take to it. You know, and we released the first single about three weeks ago now, maybe Gateway yeah. Drug. Gateway um, Drug. Yeah. yeah, it was the Wednesday before Bloodstock. So about two weeks ago, I suppose. Mm -hmm. But um, yeah, the reception of that's been really good. Um, it's fucking chill, man. It really is. Cheers, man. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I think I think the rest of the album is going to catch people by surprise. In a good cool way, yeah. <laughs> yeah, man. Yeah, like get, Gateway for us, I think was kind of like the obvious single, like the most accessible. Um, and I think the rest of the album is really going to catch people. Not not like we were drastically changing, but we've yeah. evolved as musicians and as a band. And uh, yeah. and I think I think it's going to catch people by surprise a little bit in a good way. Hopefully, I'm I'm looking forward to hearing. Like, I can't believe this is your first. This is like the first album i mean yeah, so yeah, long, like... we, yeah we released three eps i guess because yeah. we had the first um first one she's shaped by the landscape was a long time ago now 2015 or 16 16 i think i, I have say. that i think i have that one yeah with the vines on the cover the green yeah. one <clears throat> yeah 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 and then we released a kind of a, a shorter ep um ptsd that came out in the summer of 2017 i think it was <clears throat> and that, that had in for a penny in for a pound on it um yeah. And then <clears throat> we had the self-titled EP then, I think it was, that was January 2018. Right. And that was like Tuesday Blues and all, all that, that was that, was mm. that one. Um, and then, yeah, I suppose by the end of 2019, we recorded the album in Southampton with Lewis Johns. And by the way, Lou Joe, love that guy, man. Yeah. Like he is just such a good dude. And like, man, he he's recorded so many great bands now. I mean, he's done, he's done Conjure's first album, you what know, about, and those about. dudes, are, yeah. Yeah, oh, man, they are heavy Jeez. as fuck. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, and Brady from Conjure is on Cool Master. He he's guesting on that. This so people will hear that on Friday. Uh, and we've become really good friends with those dudes since we toured with them. Like, in the great, great band line. Can't can't recommend them highly enough. Mm. Uh, but Lujo, like, yeah, he's recorded Palm Reader. He's done um, Rolla Tomasi's new album. They released a single last week. Sounds great. Yeah, like yeah. everything he does touches. You know, turns the gold, man. He's he's just got the he's got the sound. He's got the knack, and he's great to work with. Really super friendly. I'm not afraid to tell you it was a shit take. <laughs> yes, yeah. So I go again, you know. You need but that, in a don't way. you? You do oh, need 100%, that. Though. man. You get, yeah, you can't have someone being like, yeah, that's fine. You know yeah. what I mean? You need someone to be like, that was great, but it can be better. You know, you want the absolute best on there. And that's that's what we got out of us for sure. Yeah. And he had no problem, like, and we had no problem in working with him in terms of production as well. He, you know, suggesting ideas for parts that maybe he's found, you know, this fill could be a little bit different here, you know. Maybe yeah. the bass line could change up a little bit there, add a little, few notes or whatever. So really great dude to work with. And I, you know, I'd say I, I hope we work with again with him again in the future. And I'd advise any other band that wants to go to him and book him, book him while you can. Yeah. <laughs> so you just enjoyed the other. That's, that's great to hear that you just enjoyed the experience because you know yourself. Oh, yeah, it, can, it can be a taxing uh, experience at times. So, I mean, if you have a if you have an, a good rapport with, with your producer from the start, it's just so much better, isn't it? Oh, 100 percent. Yeah, like he's just such a nice guy. I mean, we, we got to chat to him a little, not, not much, but kind of over email, you know, before we, we met up to yeah. work on him because we, we had to book him like six months in advance or whatever. Yeah, so, yeah. Um, but yeah, no, it was all good from day one. We met him, hung out and um, got working on the album. And I think we had 11 days booked. We kind of we figured, you know, we had 10 songs on the album. We figured, you know, probably a track per day kind of thing. Mm. And then the extra day is there in case we need it, you know. But we actually got it done, I think, in nine days, um, which was great because it, it gave us an extra two days, obviously. But, the, you know, on day 10, we kind of added some extra layers of vocals and some yeah. production ideas. And it just allowed us to kind of polish it that little bit more, you know. Awesome. That's cool. And so, um, yeah, so, I mean, if all goes well, you'll be recording with him as long as it's can. <laughs> oh man, yeah, I, I reckon so. I mean, we haven't had the discussion of who we'll work with next, but I, I'd imagine all of us are thinking Lewis again. You know, absolutely, yeah. man. 
Yeah, and he's got a great place over there. It's it's um it's in Southampton, and it's a, an old kind of farmyard for all the world. It's been converted oh. into a few businesses. Um, and like you know, they have digs there. We we crashed in the in the room there and stuff as well. Like so, mm. it, was, it was cool. Yeah, it was nice. And and man, some of the gear they had there. Well, oh, we walked in, it was like drum heaven as well. Like, <laughs> <laughs> man, some of the old snares and stuff they had, like brass snares and all. Oh, great, absolutely great. Like, um. I've always wanted to. Be, this this is gone off topic a little bit now. Yeah. I've always wanted to be in a hardcore band, would you believe? Really? Always, yeah. Yeah. Always. But at the, on the style of uh, like Slapshot or something like that, you know, or the Crown. Gotcha. Yeah. The more kind of yeah, the old school eighties yeah, like yeah. Yeah. I love yeah. that kind of shit. Even the crossover yeah. stuff, you know. I always wanted to do something like that, you know. But uh, I always yeah, uh, yeah. kind of got cold feet at the last minute type thing. You know? <laughs> yeah. I remember. And there's was, such an energy to it, like you know. Yeah. I remember I was going to start, so I had just a, assembled a, 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 you know, a, a band, we'll say, and uh, I just kind of got cold feet at the end, you know, because I, I feel, especially if you're going to try and do that kind of style of hardcore, you have, to, there has to be a certain believability about it, doesn't it? They're really, really yeah. good. And yeah. while, yeah, while I do all my singing and my performing from here, I think, for that kind of stuff, it needs to go even deeper, like, you know. So yeah, yeah, yeah. It's it's quite a throaty, and mm. you know, it comes from the diaphragm quite a bit, I think, yeah. as well. Um, yeah, it's it's very shouty. I think that that particular style of hardcore yeah. is very shouty, like yeah. Which yeah, I can I could do it better than I could do the heavier hardcore stuff. That's yeah, that to be yeah, the modern stuff really, isn't it now? Mm-hmm. Yeah, so yeah. You look at like. I was about to say straight from the path, but they they've gone in such a rage against the machinish direction, you know what I mean, with their with their stuff yeah. like. But they still have the heavy, you know. They still got the grooves. They still got the hardcore element to it. But yeah, there's a lot of like if you look at bands like um, I was about to say Nails, but Nails are more of a grindcore band, I guess. Mm. But they have some hardcore elements. But like, like the singer and Nails, man, <laughs> that dude is absolutely he sounds brutal. Like it's yeah. really fucking hefty. And like even like Malevolence, that, that UK band I was telling you about yeah. to play Bloodstock, like they, their vocalist like does almost like death metal loads of times, like you know what I mean? So wow. it's it's just there's all sorts of ranges of vocals in, yeah. in hardcore now, and it's really expanded, like you know. Um frustration were great back in the day, weren't they? Oh man, that band, like so good, so yeah. fucking good. And it it's such a shame they finished up, you know, and I'm sure there was reasons and whatever, but um mm. I would love if they got back together. I know they do the odd show every now and yeah. again. For charity. Um, kind of comeback shows and whatever. Yeah. Charity. They've done some charity stuff. Um, but man, I, I would love if they came back earlier. But I know Nilo is doing quite well now, though, with um, with his own hip-hop thing going on. You oh, know? yeah. <laughs> um, so he's doing really well and he's enjoying it. And, you know, it, you know, such a great dude as well. And yeah. I, hope, I hope it goes well for him. You know, he's... Good guy. Yeah, absolutely, man. Um, another band I, I only recently discovered, I don't know if you know them, they're, they're called Goon. Oh, no, Goon. I know the name. G-O-O-N, yeah. Goon, yeah, they're from yeah, Dublin, yeah. Dublin Hardcore. But I just like what I heard of them. Yeah. And, uh, it's more, it's like that crossover type stuff, you know, so. Yeah, uh, That yeah. seems to be kind of picking up steam again in Dublin anyway. Mm. No. Well, I think yeah the Dublin hardcore scene has always kind of had that crossover thing going on you know they, yeah. they like I think there's a lot of influence from um, from the 80s even though some of them yeah, they might not even realise it like that, yeah. that they're taking that influence but you know the old kind of mad ball sick of it all yeah. all that it's... kind of stuff I think that sound is there in Dublin you know and I think yeah. it's very prevalent and even a little bit in Belfast as well like yes. I think that kind of creeped up there too like yeah, um, yeah like, there's been so many cool hardcore bands I mean but looking at metal bands like from Dublin, like Red Enemy, man, I, I, like there's oh. a band, like you know those dudes, man. Sublime. Oh, they they it's still one of the best ever to come out of this country. Like just incredible and so tight as well. Like. Yeah. And I know, like I mean, I love the Scratch now, man. I like the Scratch are so good and they're, they're brilliant. Like killing it at the moment, and I'm delighted yeah. for them. But I'm just like, lads, give us an old Red Enemy show, please. Yeah. <laughs> just, it's just an experience. Just give us one or two, like. Oh, yeah, fuck it is. Like you know. I would love if they did one or two more. Absolutely, like but it depends what they want to do as well. You know, I mean, they're all exactly all, all loving the scratch, they're all doing their own thing, and and yeah. fair play to them. You know, the lads, the lads are great. Like you know, yeah. it's right down their alley as well. The scratch, the scratch oh, are, yeah, mad that's bad. that's their humor. Like yeah, they yeah. they love it. Like yeah, yeah. So yeah, hero so, and error as well. I should mention hero and error. Now are they still band. going? Are they? Uh, 
I don't think so. Right, <laughs> but like right. maybe, maybe not. I know they've done shows recently enough, like a couple of years ago. Um, but I know their most recent singer, Can, um, who is now in Heart of a Coward in the UK. Okay. Um, he like obviously he lives in the UK, so it's not easy for them to you know get together for shows or whatever. Mm. And even even more difficult now with the, the pandemic and everything. So, but I know um, Confi, the drummer. Um, he's you know I did some covers and stuff with him last year. We did some yeah. Deftones covers and just you know hand lockdown stuff and whatever. Yeah. Um, he's still keeping busy playing drums. Um, that's kind of his full time gig. Yeah, you know, a, being a drummer. Lethal drummer. Oh yeah, Confi's played, incredible. Played, played one gig with us as a as a Deft. I think I might have seen that gig actually. Yeah, yeah. didn't Lango do a show or two with you as well? Lango was in the band for. He was in the band, right? Yeah, okay, he yeah, was yeah. in. A, he was our first kind of proper drummer. Um, Full time kind of thing, yeah. Like, yeah until yeah, until yeah. Red Enemy was starting to get too busy, so. Yeah, gotcha. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. we've we've been friends with him since he was fucking like seventeen or something. Oh uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> there's there's another dude, man. Gas gas lad, like yeah, he's he's so real. funny. He's unreal. Yeah. He's probably um, one of my he's one of my favorite drummers in the country, if not my favorite. Oh yeah. 100% like yeah he's just the way he plays the energy he gives off while he plays all that kind of yeah. stuff he's just great actually speaking of drummers who have been phenomenal and I wish I got to see him more often these days is uh, Ronan Nolan who used to drum for Murdoch oh yeah 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 and Ronan Ronan is with uh, you know I don't even want to try and say the name now in case I get it wrong <laughs> but it's a it's a pretty big Irish act at the moment and is it Ryan what's his name Kind of a singer songwriter dude, Ryan something. I can't think of his surname now. Um uh, anyway. Uh Ronan is touring with him at the moment. Well not uh, at the moment, recent years. Yeah. Uh, and he's like toured the US with him and whatever oh, as well. Cool. Um, but Ronan is such a sick drummer, man. He's another one who's making a living off, off playing drums, like yeah. so that he's was such another, a nice dude as well. Another sick band as well, Murdoch. Yeah, Murdoch. Oh. Great man. Yeah. And 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 hats off to Aiden as well, man. He's killing it as a producer now. You know, he's living yeah. in New York. Um, comes back to Ireland pretty regularly um, to work with people, which is cool as well. But uh, yeah, all that, all that band are doing great, man. It's uh, you know, it's good. To, Murdoch never officially finished, so I'm holding up hope that uh, he, he might on. do some shows again at some stage. You know. <laughs> <laughs> so listen, um, I'm gonna let you go because uh, yeah, I, I, we could, like, you saw how quickly that went. We could talk all night, actually. Yeah, easy, man. It's it's once you get talking music, it's hard to stop, yeah. man. You know. But it's you know it's gas because I said I haven't seen you in so long. It's it, it, it just, yeah. it's just nice to shoot the shit, I suppose you could say again. Catch up, like yeah, yeah, man, absolutely. absolutely. I have to say, I'm I I think you are fucking awesome, and I'm not just saying that. Uh, cheers, man. And cheers. Uh, I've always thought you were a fucking deadly musician, anyway, as you know. Ah, right, man. So, uh, You're making me blush here now. <laughs> Well, look, we're yeah, talking yeah. about you and your band, so I'm just, I know, yeah, yeah. just being honest. It's just know? such an Irish thing, though, isn't it? Ah, don't compliment me. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Just, you know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's um, just the way we are. So, listen, just remind us again the name of the album and the single, and we'll put the links up and that kind of stuff for us. Yeah, yeah. So, the album is Disposable Youth, coming out on the 12th of November. Ten tracks in total. Uh, we released the first single, Gateway Drug, two weeks ago. You can check that on all platforms, YouTube, Spotify, all those. And the new single is coming this Friday, Cruel Master, uh, with guest feature from Brady from Conjurer. And again, that'll be on all platforms too. And uh, we have some new merch out. Always got to, got to, you know, got to do the hustle. Got to get the yeah. merch mentioned. <laughs> some good stuff. Uh, you can, if you go to our Facebook or Instagram, you'll find a link if you want to buy any merch as well. Cool. I'm sure we'll have links up for all of that stuff on the description from this as well. So. Nice one, man. Uh, Dave, it's been an absolute blast to see you again and have a good yeah, chat. Man. Thanks yeah, for coming as, to, yeah, thanks for coming out to the show. And you, hopefully, wouldn't it be nice somewhere down the line if we got to play a gig together? Yeah, man, I'd fucking love it. Like, you know, it's it's been so long since we've been on the same bill. Yeah. Like, the last time we were on the same bill was in my old band, Orpheus. And that's Orpheus, like... Orpheus, yeah. Jesus. That's over 10 years ago now, like, you know what I mean? So... Was, yeah. was that the logo? Was that the one that you had the logo that you could read either way, upside down or something? Yeah, yeah. for uh, yeah, reverse. You, you, yeah, yeah. I can't remember yeah. the specific name on the type of logo, but yeah, you could read it forwards or backwards the same way, like or upside Brilliant. down. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Our drummer yeah. came up with that. Don't ask me how. <laughs> <laughs> he must have been. I don't know, stoned or something. I don't know. Yeah, probably. <laughs> <laughs> right. Listen. Um. Thanks again for coming on, and hopefully, sure. Hopefully, we'll have you back on again at some point whenever. Absolutely, you know. man. It's been a pleasure. Thanks for having Absolutely. me on. Absolutely. Uh, King Wells Court, we are out of here.